one doesn't tell you that graph, but ladies and gentlemen, I would highly recommend that you understand what to graph with this. Um, please note, guys, you could always think of this as like the L times one over here. So in reality, we want to identify what is happening to this graph. So you have this negative two being multiplied by one, technically, right? So that negative two is technically your value of a, your variable a. So I could say a equals negative two, and then this value here is going to be h is equal to negative five, right? Because it's x minus h, so x minus a negative five would be x plus five. All right, so now we need to remember what exactly are these for our transformations. So a is negative. If it's negative, that means it reflects the x or y, x or y, x-axis. Jeez, oh man, could you mind open that up? Um, and then we also are multiplying by a, which is a, a constant, it's, or I'm sorry, it's a value, which is greater than 1. So therefore, that is going to be a vertical stretch. So we have a vertical stretch as a factor of 2. We have a um, reflection over the x-axis. And then the last thing, we have x plus 5, which is going to be shifting left 5 units. Okay. Now again, to really make sense of this, I'm just going to graph it. So we have this graph over here, where you see my vertical asymptote is at 0. So if I shift that graph 5 units to the right, where is my new vertical asymptote? At 5. It's going to the left. Thank you. Now, did the horizontal asymptote change? If you just shift them to the left, does that really change? No. Now, the original graph looks something like this. But ladies and gentlemen, if I reflect that over the x-axis, I reflect this over the x-axis, and I reflect this over the x-axis, it's going to look like the green graph. Now, obviously, you could apply the vertical transformation or the vertical factor. I'm not really concerned about that. I just want to make sure you guys know that you can identify it. But we'll let the graphing calculator do all that work for us, OK? So here's what our graph looks like. Um, we identified the domain. Well, the domain is for all values. Um, remember, that cannot make our denominator equal to 0. So the first thing we do is set our denominator equal to 0. And we say x cannot equal, or x equals negative 5. That means all numbers are inside the domain except for negative 5. Again, just to re-teach teach this one last time, let's use a number line. Let's pretend this number line has all the values, real numbers, in the as x variables. Now we said all numbers are in the domain except for negative 5. Why? Because negative 5 makes the denominator 0, correct? So here's the number line. This number line goes infinitely to the left, so it goes to negative infinity, and infinitely to the right, which goes to positive infinity. But all numbers are covered except for negative 5. So in Algebra 1, we learned about open circles, right? Open circles is not a part of the graph. But all other values are a part of this graph. So let me actually write this as an inequality. You could write it as negative infinity is less than negative 5, which is less than 5. Or I'm sorry, which is less than infinity. Or the way that we've been teaching this is negative infinity goes all the way to what value? Negative 5 and then starts back at negative 5 to infinity. And we just connect those with a union. And that's it. And then last but not least, we need to identify our limits. So this is saying the limit as x approaches negative infinity from the left. So here's negative 5. We need to approach it from the left, because that little negative up there says from the left. So as we're going from the left, we're going approaching infinity. And from the right, we're now approaching negative infinity. And there you go.